Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 903. I had the white pieces and started off with e4. And my opponent went uh, g6, so it was a bit of a rare response, but uh, still playable. You don't see it at the top levels, but um, you know certainly at this level it's, it's a move you can get away with. Uh, they don't like it at the top levels because it generally leads to a position where black has got a lot less space and they're, they're pretty good at squeezing and uh, just uh, converting those positions to a win. But with the early uh, bishop uh, deployment and delaying the knight out, this is known as a modern defense. If the knight comes out, that would be the, the Pierce defense. So the way I play it is not the most common here. Actually, uh, knight c3 first, then uh, d6, and then f4. So that's the normal way to uh, get into the uh, three pawns attack. I still think it's an interesting uh, setup either way. Um, one point to keep in mind is that uh, this queen will come out here with a check, potentially, when you when you have this uh, f-pawn moved forward. So I always like to play this at a time when I know that there's, uh, uh, when the, the queen can't come out in one move and I'll have time to get in this uh, knight f3 move. So I'm, I'm usually in a hurry to play knight f3. Um, but anyway, let's go to uh, how the game went. Uh, yeah, in this position, you can play f4 right away. It's still... Uh, and okay move here and we could transpose into a similar kind of position for example if he'd played uh, d6 here and I played knight c3 we'd end up in a standard uh, three pawns attack but he goes with the uh, c6 bit of a rare response and now we're almost out of the opening book and uh, it looks like knight c3 is a way to get back into uh, lines that are more populated uh, but there's nothing wrong with knight f3 actually in this position and it does uh, you know in case this pawn ever moves with tempo, opening up this diagonal for the queen. I want to have that square covered already. So that's why I always go with this uh, early knight f3 uh, move when I have this kind of setup with the, the three pawn attack. Um, let's see, he went um, d5 here. And I just pushed on. I'm not afraid of having a, a big center here that he can undermine it, um, you know, maybe pushing on with the g pawn at some point or the c pawn. But uh, but for now, I just have a lot more space. And uh, and it's funny, yeah, h5 is the move here. And also it's recommended at various times by the chess engine as an interesting way, I guess, for uh, black to gain space on the king side here and stop or slow down my pawns from coming forward on the king side. Anyway, he went bishop g4. Yeah, let's go back. We're just out of the opening book, so let's look at the notation page. The chess engine gives white a really huge advantage here. Uh, well, chess engines in general really like the extra space in these kind of positions. Um, it didn't much care for my bishop e2 move. It liked to play the other bishop out, bishop to e3, h5. That's what I mentioned. It likes this h5 move for black, gaining a little bit of space over here, and knight bd2. Yeah, maybe one idea is actually to castle queen side here. Just move the queen out of the way and get the uh, get the king on the other side of the board and then you're free to kind of push these pawns forward and, and uh, tear open the king side. Might be an interesting way to play it. It says that's the biggest advantage for uh, white. So bishop e2 still keeps an advantage to white but not as big. Anyway, knight d7, I castle, he goes uh, e6, I go h3 kicking the bishop and now is uh, black's first mistake really. I mean the uh, opening that he played is not not considered uh, you know, top quality or professional level opening, but I think it's still playable. But uh, this is a definite mistake. He really should just take the knight here. Um, there's no point in letting his bishop be chased around, even though I didn't uh, get the most mileage out of this. But anyway, this position after knight e7 is still um, defensible for black. Like I said, cramped, less space, but uh, playable. Anyway, he went uh, bishop to f5, letting me uh, kick the bishop around some more and gaining more space. And then here there's this nice move that the chess engine points out. So when I play knight c3, I'm sort of letting his bishop uh, exchange itself for the knight and get out of trouble without suffering any pawn damage. But I could have played this move knight g5. Now the bishop has nothing it can take. Well, there's a pawn there, but uh, it's it's no longer able to give itself up for a piece. And uh, say after h5, once again, just trying to get some activity on the king side, I would take the bishop and this pawn in the long run is uh, is going to fall, so I'm going to just be a pawn up after a while. And um, 
maybe there's a bit of a danger of the king side opening too early before I'm ready to handle it because the chess edge pushes on with g5 here and just keeps it closed. And then I guess my pieces come out bit by bit. I mean, one thing I should worry about in this position is my development seems to be a bit lagging. Although um, Black hasn't castled yet, but he's got, I don't know, he's got ways to get his pieces into the game. Yeah, I don't think I'm really behind in development here, but I do have to take care that I don't fall behind in development. Um, anyway, I went with knight c3, and so after this exchange, he's, he's not so bad off, actually. He gives up the bishop pair, but, um, and he's, he's still down in space as before, but, uh, oh, I took with the rook, that's right. Taking with the rook. I was thinking maybe of doubling rooks or queen and rook on the f-file might be interesting. Uh, either way would be fine, actually. He played h6, a6. Once again, the chess engine likes uh, h5 there. Well, let's see, and I pushed on with f5. I decided my development was good enough here and better than black's and it was uh, useful to open things up. So this seems to be fine. He takes, oh, he took the other way. He takes, I take, and then he plays this crazy move, knight takes e5. So there was, there was no need for this. I mean, it's the kind of position he asked for from the opening. Um, he could get a little more activity with his pieces by playing something like queen h5, but he doesn't really have to give up material at this point. Uh, let's see. I mean, I, I would try and squash him with a move like f6. This is also a recommended chess engine line. Bishop h6, preparing to trade off that bishop. You know, you, you often want trades when you have uh, when you have less space, uh, makes it easier to find uh, squares for the remaining pieces. Let's see. This bishop drops back to f1, maybe shielding the king a little bit, protecting that pawn, and freeing up the uh, rook for maneuvering. Uh, black could trade off bishops at any time, but uh, knight to f1 is the move that the chess engine recommends, with the idea of bringing the knight out here, and. Uh, well, he's got to trade off that. He's got to bring this knight out. He's got to trade off this bishop. He's got to move the h pawn forward so this knight can get into the game. Uh, but it's still actually a playable position. It's just uh, <laughs> kind of a horrible position. <laughs> Not a fun position to play because you're always struggling to find uh, squares to put your pieces on. But he could even castle queenside here and be pretty safe. So he has time to unravel, and uh, and so that would be a, still a playable position. Whereas after uh, Knight takes e5. This is just losing as long as I don't uh, blunder here. And I did look at the rest of the moves with the chess engine, and there were no blunders. There were some interesting moments, but uh, but I didn't actually uh, give up any any material here. Let's see. So he gets uh, you know a couple of pawns for his piece, and he's got uh, he's looking at my exposed king, but he does not have enough development to really exploit that. Uh, my development is better than his at this point. And uh, bishop f4, the chess engine approved of this move, just trading off his active piece so that uh, so that I don't get in trouble here. He takes, I take, and then queen b6 check. And uh, here, the chess engine didn't like queen d4, although I still like it, but <laughs> the chess engine would just move the king aside. Uh, let's see, black my castle queen side, and, uh, and then play would continue from here. So I guess it's not so easy uh, to for black to arrange a check on that diagonal, and I can also protect it with the bishop. So seems just stepping aside with the king. I'm not going to be in any trouble, and I can just play on this game a piece up. Uh, and that's the the preferred move by the chess engine. Uh, it doesn't really like grabbing a pawn here. If it thinks that if black grabs a pawn here, then that's not so great. Uh, say rook down to defend the knight. Um, the queen is nearly trapped. It starts. Uh, Unwinding here with queen b4, rook b1, and then uh, queen over to h4. Let's see, did I look at any more moves? And then, yeah, queen queen to g1. And it likes white quite a bit in this position. Uh, black is probably going to castle soon here, but I'm going to be opening up lines here against the king side. My king is relatively safe, and uh, and black's uh, only developed pieces is queen, so that's uh, that's a pretty good position for white. Uh, but I thought it was even simpler just to go for the end game and just uh, use my extra uh, my extra piece to round up the pawns and uh, and not have to worry about getting checkmated with queens on the board. So so I think as a practical decision I think this was fine. So he takes, I take, and, uh, and he grabbed that pawn. Actually it is an interesting moment. Uh, 
I was happy to see him grab that pawn because it creates three weak pawns that I can, you know, go after. I have an extra piece and I can just round those pawns up one by one. Uh, the chess engine would totally ignore that and just uh, start developing. And I think that's the more logical way to play and keep these pawns together. Allow me to trade if I want to, but uh, <clears throat> try and avoid creating more pawn weaknesses. So it's not worth grabbing that pawn there at all. Uh, let's see, but he did. And yeah, it sort of makes up for my mistake uh, in the chess engine's eye of trading queens. So, I, so I'm back to that big advantage I had since ever since black sacrificed a piece. Well, I had had an advantage even before that. But uh, anyway, he went. Um, I went rook f4, and I'm starting to round up these pawns. And let's uh, let's go on. I think uh, play is pretty logical here, just with my extra piece and uh, and my active development here, there's no way that he can hold on to his material, and I'm just sort of winding him up, rounding them up uh, one by one. Hey, here's an interesting point where I was trying to decide what the best thing to do was. I mean, I could have played actively with rook e7. That's a very uh, tempting idea, and the chess engine says that's still okay. I, you know, I was just worried about allowing black to give a, get active, you know, bring his rooks in to chase my king around, something like this. Um, but eventually, I can find a safe square here, it looks like, on um, d2 and block with the knight. And uh, and then go back to rounding up pawns. And then with the domination of the the, um, the seventh rank there, that should be pretty strong for me as well. So that would have been a good way to play. But, um, well, the way I played is fine, too. I just did not uh, see if that was entirely safe. There may have been some trick there where he was uh, getting getting a lot of checks on my king, maybe even a perpetual. But it seems like I can walk away walk away from all of that without a problem. <clears throat> so I could have played uh, that way as well. Anyway, I started the walk early, just started walking with my king. He did come out, down and give the check. I get to this d2 square. He gets a pawn, but, uh, well, I grab a pawn too, and now I am getting to the seventh rank here. So he... Uh, decides to check and, and get rid of one pair of rooks. And not a bad decision, because if I managed to double my rooks over there, that would be that would be very bad for black. Oh, let's see, I took with the knight, yeah, instead of the king. Okay, so let's just continue on to the end of the game. I mean, basically, I'm just uh, up a piece here, and I just have to round up these pawns, and uh, it's not a problem. And then we get to the point where he decided to resign. You know, I've just told his... Uh, hold his pawns back and uh, you know the king has to move back my king comes forward and I just round up his pawns one by one a simple way to win um, they, the the uh, one line I wasn't sure about was uh, after a5 whether I should defend my uh, pawn or take his pawn if I just defend any exchanges then I'll end up with a b pawn which is sometimes easier to queen so I just wasn't entirely sure about the end game sometimes there are drawing tricks in these end games so I checked it out with the chess engine. And it turns out it would have been okay to take. And I think this is kind of an interesting end game. Let's see. He, he has to walk his king back to stop me from queening. He has to give up that pawn. And uh, it's just this position I wasn't sure about. Um, you know, I can round up his pawn. And, uh, and then the king can park himself, you know, on the uh, first rank there. And then you have to wonder, uh, is there some drawing trick here? So, for example, if the king were to move here and my knight were to come into this square. Oh, no, not that, that square, but not that square. <laughs> that would be fine. Yeah, my knight were to come into this square, uh, then he's uh, he's got no moves. So there there is there are stalemate possibilities. You have to be a little bit careful here. But you, you leave this pawn back uh, on the sixth rank here until you're ready to push it forward. Um, so at this point you start bringing the knight in, knight b4, he's just shuffling back and forth here, and then now you don't, you don't go to this square here, that would be stalemate, you go to this square, knight d5, and he goes king b8, and now it's a, a win either way, um, you know, maybe the simplest way is to, uh, just put the knight there, guarding that square, and then the king has to step away, and then it's safe to push the a-pawn forward, or, uh, if you uh, if you want to be excited, you could push the apon forward now, and if he tries to block it, you can checkmate with the knight. A nice uh, finish. Anyway, a little bit of end game for you. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you all later. Bye.